the Parent and Family Resource Partner Relationships and Parenting Brief Review of Divine Truth Basics Aloisa briefly reviews Divine Truth Basics and presents information on how partner relationships affect family dynamics. Recorded in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia on the 23rd of March 2021 at 8.30am. Hello and welcome to the Parenting Principles Program. I'm Eloisa. Today I want to discuss relationships, uh, partner relationships in regards to parenting and talk a bit about the dynamics between partners and children. As a reminder, this is taking Teachings of Divine Truth as taught by my friends Jesus and Mary Magdalene, also known as AJ Miller and Mary Luck, taking principles of divine truth and applying them to parenting. So what I am speaking about is not new information. Uh, the original source is from Jesus and Mary. And if you'd like to find out more information directly, I suggest to go to the divinetruth.com website and they have links to YouTube channels and a lot of information. The Parenting Principles program is literally that, taking principles of divine truth and then specifically talking about those principles in relation to parenting. Regardless of whether you're a parent or not yet, you could still apply these, parent, these principles to your own life. That's the beauty of principles. They cross over all areas of, of life. They're not situation specific. And that's why I feel they're so important to learn and understand is you can actually take the principle and apply it to anything that is happening in the family. I feel if parents make love-based changes, that there's a lot of wonderful on-flow effects that affect children in a positive way and actually create a much more harmonious, connected, close family relationships. I feel there's a lot of pain and suffering that happens in families in general. Most of us as adults have various feelings and uh, sometimes a lot of trauma actually from our family interactions as small children. Some of us are in a lot of denial about what happened to us as small children, but we have what, the way we are now is directly affected by what happened in our lives as small children unless we've gone through a process of releasing those um, feelings and issues and errors and beliefs and whatever we've picked up along the way and then acted upon in our own lives. So this program, you can take any of the principles and you can apply them if you have children or you don't have children. I particularly use family-based examples, talk a lot about parents and children, as that's where I want to focus viewers on, is the relationships um, in the family dynamic. If you are a parent or you've been in a family, I'm sure that there have been times where there's been conflict or people being quite unkind to each other, or also maybe you think, you know, sometimes it feels like everything's fantastic in your family, but we don't really know, sometimes I notice that we don't really know our other family members, not their true feelings or thoughts or what they really feel about situations. These presentations are to share the principles of divine truth and then if you would like to, you can experiment with that in your family and see how it goes. So in previous videos, I have spoken about a whole, um, quite a lot of different concepts and ideas from the teachings of divine truth and then applying them to different parenting situations. As I've been reflecting on the videos that I've already made, I've also realized how important it is the partner relationship or the relationships between the adults in the family. Now that might be uh, multiple adults. In a sense, you may have grandparents still living with you. You may have siblings. I'm not sure. You could have all different dynamics with the adults, but the adult relationships um, influence the, what's happening between the children and also the relationships between the adults and children in the family. So this video I want to focus mainly on partner relationships, so that's between you and your partner, whether that be um, husband and wife or a wife and wife or a husband and husband, or a man, so man, ma two males, two females or a male and a female. Uh, these same principles can apply to any of these, any of the, any relationship. The principles also apply between sibling relationships, but the focus is going to be on partners, so a romantic relationship. 
So before we start, I want to just review some of the basics of divine truth that have been discussed in previous videos. We talked about some primary qualities to develop and how helpful they will be in order to make personal change. And we, I spoke about truth, absolute truth or God's truth, and the truth that includes the truth of the universe, but also how God feels about what's going on. And you can receive God's truth directly from God via the conscience, which is a mechanism that God put in it. I see it as like a truth channel between you and God. So you can find out truth about anything, including yourself, which this program is about a lot about your own self-development and personal change. And so we talked about God's truth and that's sort of where we're aiming. And then we talked about personal truth. That's the facts of things that have happened to you in your life. Also, there's the truth about how you feel about things. So being truthful with yourself about how you feel. So it's not a subjective thing. It's not like, oh, well, that's your truth and this is my truth. It's like the truth is I feel this. And that's a little bit different. I know in the world today, a lot of people are uh, dismissive of truth or try and get around truth and sort of make it work for them rather than, no, there, is, there are facts and there is truth and things did happen. And we have experiences and how we feel about those is the truth of how we feel about them. Now, the truth of how humans feel about things may not be in harmony with the way God feels about things. So my opinion, and to actually do, to make any progress on this course or program, it is, quite, it is very important to seek God's truth. Otherwise, you're flailing around in the dark a lot. God has made, put in feedback mechanisms and ways to find out truth. So, so many wonderful, loving ways, like God's laws, except and different different ways like this. So we've talked about truth, God's truth, and then personal truth. And another quality to develop is love, a desire to love others. And that's a natural love that comes out of our soul towards others. That's a quality to develop. And we can also receive God's love directly from God. No one else can give that. God has to give it just as we need to share and give, gift our gift of love to others if we so desire. Then there's another quality which is faith and that is having sometimes having a um, well if you don't have faith you're not going to do anything you're not going to take any actions because you're not going to believe that it's possible so we need to have some faith in order to take different actions than we're already taking such as the faith that God is good otherwise why would you ever want a relationship with him we might have you know faith in physical things as well as as spiritual uh, matters and faith is a very important quality to develop there's also the quality of, or so, so we've covered truth, love, faith, humility. Humility is feeling all of your feelings and emotions and letting them pass through you and whether they're painful or pleasurable. And humility is a very, very important quality to develop. Uh, otherwise, it's going to be a bit of a challenge to <laughs> ever feel anything because you won't want to. But the combination of those four qualities are very important. So love, truth, faith, humility. I also spoke about action, taking an action in order to do something now. That doesn't necessarily mean it's a physical action. It might be an emotional action, like feeling your emotions. Or taking an action of prayer. And we spoke a bit about prayer, which is a longing from your soul for, for whatever it is, and all, like for whatever the thing is that you'd like. Now, any pure longing or pure prayer or pure desire is always answered by God. So that's a pretty lovely provision, I feel, that God has created for us, that any pure prayer is answered. And that also, I feel, often relates right back to us as parents, is if children express a pure desire, then if we're going to emulate God and do things God's way, which I feel is the ultimate parent, God is like the ultimate parent, and for me personally, I'd, I would love to parent as God parents, now, I'll never be able to because God's infinite and just abundant and infinite in love. But to the best of my soul's capacity, that is what my aim is. And this program, if you've got similar desires or you come to have similar desires, this is a program about finding out how God feels about things. You know, what is God's version of love? Because it's, we need to get an education in love and it's hard on earth when there's so many different belief systems and a lot of error or 
false beliefs and things that actually aren't true about love that are taught and that we pick up as we grow into adults. So this program is based on seeking for what is God's truth about love and seeking for God's opinion on things as when you're sort of on your own and seeking from your own perspective or from the world to give you answers. In my experience, they're never actually very satisfactory, to be honest. And I am seeking to have a relationship with God, which is one of the ways to gain a education in love. I started with the teachings of divine truth and Jesus and Mary, who are two, who are a wonderful soul um, couple, so they're soulmates, and they understand far more about love than I do. So that was where my education began, and I will continue to be educated, I feel, for the rest of my existence. Princip the principles in this, as I said, they are, I suppose, the start of working towards a relationship, um, you know, with God if you want one, or just to learn more about love. In previous presentations, I've spoken about ethics as a way to learn and become educated in love before you have a relationship with God and before you really understand what love is. And my definition of ethics or, you know, is basically the golden rule, which is treat others as you'd like to be treated. And that can help you to discern and decipher a lot of what is love and what isn't. It's not a perfect system because sometimes we are injured in our feelings about love or we have, or another word is having like errors about what, what is loving and what is not. So unless you have a relationship with God or you have people who know more about love than you, often we might be seeking and flailing around in the dark to find that information. I found that ethics is a good go-to when you're uncertain and you can say, hold on, would I like this to happen to me? I've used some sort of extreme examples such as if you're hitting child for instance well one that is actually assault and uh, is something that if it was happening to you you'd probably be quite up in arms about and you can say no I wouldn't like to be hit I don't like that very much so there's an ethics you know and you can go okay well it's probably well it's not loving to hit somebody else if I don't like it um, you know if I wouldn't like that treatment to happen to me now sometimes we can have errors or you know uh, false beliefs about what love is and what love does Sometimes we have addictions, emotional addictions, that we believe are loving. And we sometimes believe that with our whole heart. And if, when we don't have a relationship with God or someone who knows more about love than us, sometimes ethics doesn't mean that we're totally being loving. So remaining open to feedback from God's laws or from you know, people who might know more about love than you, or just open to the possibility that you might be wrong about what is right and what is loving and what isn't as you begin this, this journey through, these, you know, um, through this program. If you just stay open to possibilities, you can gain an education you know, and gain feedback if you, pure, you know, have a pure desire for that. And prayer can help you to do that. Then I also spoke about, um, I spoke about ethics and also morality. But morality being in brief about what is right and loving and truthful from God's perspective in relation to others and creatures in the environment. And that is, that is love. But unless you want to have a relationship with God, you know, you know, sometimes it can be quite challenging to be moral. Now, I know morality in the world has a different sort of definition and different religious groups have certain morals and the world even has, I suppose, what they would call a moral code, though, in my opinion, <laughs> I don't see a lot of uh, moral people at the, in my immediate life. Uh, or, or in governments or in the world at large, actually, particularly in leadership. There's a lot of people, actually, where we're lacking or have a deficit of morality, I feel, in the world today, even based on, you know, good morals from, from the world's perspective. Anyway, that's a bit of an aside. This is about gaining an education in love and the principles you can help you to do that. So that brings me to the end of this presentation and I wish you all the best until I see you next time.